All right, exploratory factor analysis now up on the table using SPSS. So these numbers represent the answers of a 28 question survey that is trying to measure the quality of life from the employees that took the survey. First three questions are kind of easy. Well, to me anyway. So how many items are in the survey? That means how many questions are in the survey? And there's 28. How many variables in the survey? That was a trick question. A variable and an item are the same thing. So there's 28 in the 28 variables in the survey as well. So what type of data are you are you working with? It's not nominal. It's not interval. It could be either ratio or ordinal, but I think I'm going to go with ordinal in this case. So the data is ordinal data. So we're going to go ahead and run our principal component analysis and answer these following questions. So hold on. So you're going to go to analyze. Let me pull this down a little bit for you. You're going to go to analyze dimension reduction factor. Okay, so we're going to do the PCA first in order to answer a couple of the assumptions. So first thing, we're going to put everybody over into the variable box. Like that. We're going to go to descriptives. We want coefficients, this, determinants, KMO, and that's all we need here. Extraction. Make sure you're under principal component. And we always want the scree plot. Click continue. And then we should just click OK. So our first table is the R matrix or the correlation matrix between each item and each and every other possible combination of items. So there's a bunch of correlations here. This is what it uses to calculate which of the items will load up under which of the new factors. But we're not going to look at that. Mm -mm -mm. We're going to scroll down and look at the KMO Bartlett's test. So this will answer questions about the sample size and the sphericity. Let me bounce back to the answer sheet. So the first assumption is sample size. So it depends on which book you read, but it says basically... Uh, right around anywhere between 5 and 10 participants per variable. So if we got 28 variables, 28 questions, if you multiply that by 10, that's 280. We have 239, so that's somewhere between 5 times 28 and 10 times 28. So with this first rule, I'm going to say that our sample size is okay. And this KMO, the kaiser meyer measurement of sampling adequacy, if this number was smaller than 0.5, then you would violate the assumption of uh, sample size. But our KMO number is much bigger than needed. And the second question, the second assumption, is the reliable correlation. That is the Bartlett's test of sphericity. We want this to be significant, which it is in our model here. What that means is at least two of your items are correlated significantly. So that's basically the minimum amount of correlations you need is just one in order to run a factor analysis. So that part's good. Uh, number three, normality is not an assumption. So we really don't care if these, these items are normal or not. The last thing is multicollinearity, and that's just like re multiple regression. You don't want two of your, your items to be exactly the same for every person taking a test. We, we just check the determinant for that. And all we're looking for is to make sure it does not equal zero, and ours doesn't. It's a very small number, but it's not zero. So therefore, we can assume that our assumptions are all met. So we're, everything's good, and we're good to go, so we're going to continue. Question four, were any of the loading values less than 0.3? Okay, that's the commonalities part. That is this next table here. So basically, you're just looking for any extraction value for any of the questions to be less than 0.3. And it looks like there is one. Let's pull up the guided homework answer sheet. And it looks like only one. Question 12 had a very low loading. It's only 0.297. Next question is you want the scree plot. Scree, here's the scree plot of this thing. So what you're looking at is... Again, you find your one measurement on the eigenvalue and you draw a horizontal line like that. And this will tell you how many new components you have. But this is, um, this is just one way to test to see how many factors you're going to be pulling out of these 28 questions. Let's go to the next question. How many factors have an eigenvalue of greater than one? 
So we just cut and pasted the output from SPSS into our answer sheet here. And we're going to look at, here's your eigenvalue column. So it looks like the first five have an eigenvalue of greater than one. You notice number six, it's less than one. So it looks like we got five greater than one. Let's go to the next question. We're going to run a parallel analysis to see how many factors that we should keep. All right, so we did win, We did run a parallel analysis on this to discover how many of the new factors we should keep, and it looks like there was four. Again, here's the link on how to get to that cool web page. And if you forget how to do this, please refer to the previous video in the other section where we showed you how to do this. But we're just comparing these means. These are eigenvalues. So if this eigenvalue is less than the calculated eigenvalue, you, you go ahead and keep the factor. So we kept factor 1, 2, 3, 4, but this last one, you'll notice that 1.38 was bigger than the output of 1.18. So therefore, you do not keep factor 5 or anything below factor 5. So the short answer is you're going to keep four of these factors. Next question. We want the four individual factors, the percent of variance for each one of these bad boys, and that's what these are right here in this column, the percent of variance that each factor is responsible for. So we just listed them up there, okay? And then question nine is, what is the total percent of the variance that can be explained by our four factors? That is this cumulative number right here, so about 53.68%. And again, it's not the strongest model in the world. I don't think model is the right world word, but um, it's kind of, it's, it's somewhere between moderate and weak. So take what we can get. And next question, we're going to run the EFA. Here comes the money. So please hold. All right. To run the EFA, everything that we've previously done for this problem, you're just going to leave in there. We don't have to make those changes. So we're going to go to analyze dimension reduction factor. Pull this over here. And all of these guys need to be in the box. Hold on. Since we know how many factors there are now, four, we're going to go to extraction. We're going to click this fixed numbers of factors, right? That was what that whole parallel analysis was about. So we're going to click four. Boom. Then we go to rotation. And this is kind of a glitch in the SPSS. We're looking for a, uh, a factor correlation box, but it won't put it out until you click the Oblemen rotation method. So in other words, we're... We're going to test to see if it's oblique first. Okay, so we're going to click Continue, Options. We're going to sort by size. They're going to take out the small coefficients. The small coefficients, we want to, it's just going to delete it if it's anything less than 0.4. I'm going to click Continue. I'm going to click OK. So this part has always confused me. What we just did was basically run another PCA. And SPSS is going to print out the same output. But, rem uh, but remember, we're not looking at this box, the correlation. We've already looked at this. We've already looked at this. We've already looked at this. We're trying to get down to the factor correlation box, which is should be the very last one. There it is right there. So let me switch to my guided homework. And here it is right there. So if... If your correlations were all large correlations, in other words, 0.5 or above, then you would probably assume that the factors would be oblique. In other words, that they have a lot of shared variance going on. But since our factors are relatively small, our correlations are, are, are relatively not great, there is, there's one or two that aren't too bad, but most of them are, are pretty weak, close to zero, then we're going to assume that our data is orthogonal, which means we're, we're going to rerun this with an orthogonal rotation. So let's do that. Hold on one second. Mm -mm 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 do it all over again. You're going to get the, a lot of repeated data. So analyze dimension reduction factor. The only thing you're going to check, check change is the rotation to very max. Click continue. Click OK. Again, we're going to get a lot of repeat information. Uh, don't need the correlation box. We already got this table. We already have that one. We're looking for the rotated matrix. 
There's the component matrix. There's our money box right there. Okay, so let me switch over to the answer sheet. So I forgot to mention question 11, which test you're going to use rotation-wise. We're going to try the bare max because we're assuming our factors are going to be orthogonal, which their correlations kind of indicate. So, so here's the rotated component matrix, okay? What it does is it lists each individual question under which factor it should belong to. So these questions here, they're kind of hard to read here, but question 22, 16, 14, blah, 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 all the way down to question 10 should be loaded up under factor 1. And these questions should be loaded under factor 2. These questions should be loaded under factor 3. And these last couple of questions should be loaded under factor number 4. I just I put them into a, an easier table for you to read. So there's that part. All right, next question is, what is the largest and smallest factor loadings for each of the new factors? Again, we would use this same uh, rotated matrix box, and it lists them in order. So the, the top one is the largest loading. The bottom one is the smallest loading. There's a little bit of variance here, 0 0.78 versus 0.545. Eh. A lot of spread there. Not a lot of spread in the second one, right? 0 0.68 to 0.52. Eh, the spread is kind of, it's not bad. So that's how these things are, are loading up. Almost done. We have to check the reliability for each of the new factors. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. We go back to analyze. This time we're going to go to scale. We're going to go to reliability. Get in there, you. Reliability. Wasn't that clever of me? Okay, so which questions go under the new factor one? It was, hold on. Yeah, I have to go back to the table to see which one's under number one. So it was, where is it? There it is. So 8, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, 21. Give me a second. I'm going to load those up. And we're only going to do this first one. Okay, this is eating up a lot of minutes here. So the only statistic we need is item scale scale if deleted this last one is very important it uh, it will it will show you what your chromebacks alpha will be if you took out one of the questions so this is a big one and those are the only ones you need here we're going to click continue and we're going to click okay where's my okay button so we get this little chromebacks alpha box so let me switch back to the guided homework please hold and so here's our results with the reliability so the first factor, very strong. Chromebacks alpha is 0.88. Remember, you want a Chromebacks alpha of at least 0.7 or above. So we repeated it for the second factor, right? I took that list of questions under the second factor, redid the reliability, got a Chromebacks of 0.85, which is great. The third factor, we got a Chromebacks alpha is 0.77, again, which is strong enough. This last one gave us a little bit of a problem. The Chromebacks alpha was not... 0.7 or above is only 0.73. So that's when this, this next table comes in handy. 0.63, not 0.73, sorry. Okay, this is when this next table comes in very handy. The name of the box is item total statistics. So look look at this one. If we if we deleted question 12 from the fourth factor, our Chromebacks alpha would be very close to 0.7. So that's what we decided to do here. Right, our, our last factor, factor four, had a Chromebacks alpha of 0.63, but once we got rid of question 12, it pushed it, it up to 0.69, which is really close to 0.7, and I'm very happy with that, so I would imagine everybody else would be too. So the last question is, would you consider this a reliable survey when it comes to measuring the quality of life? What my answer was, was the survey is reliable at measuring four different or four unique dimensions, characteristics, attributes, components, elements, facets, whatever you want to call them, of the quality of life. So I hope that helped. MGZ and Copilot. Bunga the Red Prolicious. Out of here. Have a great day. Is this thing on?